y'all, welcome back to another video. Yeah, I know part one was like thousands of years ago, but uh, if you hadn't seen part one, I basically got the engine running, it's stuck now, and this video we're gonna be diving into it and kinda finding out what the problem is and fixing it and maybe taking it for a ride. I don't know, but yeah, enjoy the video. Bam, look at this beautiful artwork in here. So, you notice this four valves a cylinder, obviously, and. It's a little bit of rust right there, but whatever. But I was kind of getting the screwdriver here, going around, because, you know, I'm thinking that, you know, the timing chains are loose. And I checked this one right here, the timing chains, not chain, chains, because there's two of them. Uh, this one down here seems a little loose. That is a lot of play. There's hardly any light, but there's two bolts that hold these sprockets on together. And this sprocket was just flopping back and forth. And oh my gosh. Look at all that. One thing I did find, it's very hard to see, but I think those are stuck valves. You know, the cam lobes are over here. And these are just staying down. And this one, the cam lobes are up. I took in the exhaust cam, intake cam, exhaust cam. I got the timing chains hanging up there. Here's all the parts laying out right here. You know, this right here is for the taco drive, just in case you were wondering. But yeah, and I do not know why they had to make it like this. I'm surprised they made it where you can get the valve cover off. But guess what? You know, okay, the head meets there, right? It's about that much. You know, why can't they make it, you know, a half bit too more? A little bit, why can't they make the frame just a little bit higher for the head to slide right off? Because I can't just take it off, these are studs. So I have to slide it all the way up for it to clear. And it's a, literally a quarter inch and it will not come off. The only other way to supposedly remove this head is to take the entire engine out. All right, I finally got this engine out by myself. And I watched videos on YouTube about how to remove this and none of that really was gonna work. So what I did was loosen up all the mounts jacked it up in the center to jack it up a little bit, removed all the mounts on this side. That little part of the frame actually comes out, so just so y'all know. And that gave me just enough room, and that way I could just kind of slide it on something like this and slide it up, and it worked. So now I can remove the head and get to work. I just got the head off. So I got the head ratchet strapped down to the table right here, so it's not gonna go anywhere. And what I'm doing is now I'm gonna compress these valves remove these retainer clips and all that, take the valves apart. Uh, so I can just go and take these valves out, buy some new ones, grind them up, valve grind them so they seat good, put them all back together and put the valve springs back together, hopefully the right way. I'm gonna go through all the valves, by the way, you know, cause if I take a head off, especially something as frustrating as this, I'm going through everything. I'm making sure everything's good before I put it all back together because once I put it all back together, I wanna, Go through all the pain and agony of taking it back apart. So, I already got four of the valves out and I'm labeling them as I take them out. So, the valves I can reuse, I can put them right back in, no problem. You can't swap valves over because, I mean, that's just not going to work. All right, condition on this valve. I just pulled the other one out, but I want y'all to see this. One, two, three. Ready? Look at that. Look at the condition of that valve. That is absolutely disgusting. That was like a broken light or whatever. But I'm laying all these valves out. I have the rear this way, which is this end right here and the front this way. But I mean, look at that. Straight, 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 completely bent. That one right there is the same way. Uh, these are not as bad. The exhaust valves are actually a little bit smaller than the intake, just if you're wondering. So I got the head back from my dad's. We drilled out the bolts and re-tapped them. So I think it was these two. These two are good now. I had to have a milling machine to do that because there's no way to do that with just a regular drill bit and all that stuff. So get all that done. I got an eBay shipment right here. About $100 worth of parts, two intake, two exhaust valves, valve seals, and a head gasket. So it's the only things that I got. And I cleaned up the head right here. And everything looks good. Boom. So, the head is done, finally. I cleaned the old gasket material off the cylinder here and I cleaned the tops of the pistons. 
with a little bit of WD-40 and that came out really nice. And I got my new head gasket here. I always line up stuff, make sure it's the right one and it is. So I'm gonna take this head gasket out and you know, put that on and I'm gonna set the head on. And it's very difficult to see all the gears, but you know, kind of get the idea with that. I'm gonna turn the output right now. I believe that's fourth gear and that's fifth gear. So you got first, second I think is way over there, third, fourth, and fifth. And there's another sprocket right here and I believe that drives the oil pump because this is the oil pump. And the clutch actually looks like to be in good condition. I'm not gonna take it off because I don't wanna do that. But, you know, these look pretty good, but we'll see. So I got all these parts cleaned up here and the head is pretty much ready to get ready to go back on, but there's only one little bitty drawback. This right here is the chain, it's the timing chain aligner. This isn't the tensioner, it's just the aligner. You got the tensioner going from right there, and you got, well, a tensioner right here too. So then this thing's broken. This little piece broke off and it's supposed to be like right there. I thought, I was sitting there thinking at first, I'm like, oh, well, I'm just gonna try to weasel the thing back in there and, you know, just try to bodge it up and I had to buy another one. Here's the thing. This, the timing chain is the thing that keeps the engine running, okay? This keeps the timing chain aligned and possibly tight, I don't know. But yeah, that was probably flopping all about when I was running it a little while ago. So yeah, I'm gonna go and buy a new one of these because I don't wanna risk putting this thing back together and it somehow slides over and chain catches it and breaks over it, no, I'm not doing that. And that potentially could have been the reason why this thing was loose, why the timing chain was loose when I first took it apart. Just a guess, I don't know. But when I took this thing apart, this thing out was broken, so I'm gonna uh, be safe and put a new one in. So here's the part number. Apparently it's a factory OEM part and it looks exactly the same, so let's get it on. All right, so since we got this new part, I'm not really gonna film myself putting it all back together because, you know, I don't really fully know what I'm doing. It's the first time I've worked on these motors. I mean, we all gotta learn. So if I'm doing something wrong, don't nag me in the comments. All right, so big cut, but I really cannot sit here and film all this because this was pretty frustrating doing this. But, you know, that's all good. Got this bolted down. I'm gonna go through with my torque wrench. This is inch pounds, but I put it to 120 inch pounds, which is 12 foot pounds and or 10 foot pounds and tighten all the bearing caps up. Quick. Also real quick, little top tip on this exhaust cam and top dead center timing mark on the engine. So obviously you gotta have a top dead center, have this lined up so it'll run correctly in the right timing. Well, I watched a video on this and you know, this cam sits a little out of whack a little bit and you gotta like, you know, set it at this point, then undo this while it's there, and then move this and torque it back, and it just didn't really work. I'm not gonna say the dude's name. I was probably doing it wrong, but, you know, I'm gonna show you my method of doing it. So my method is, is when, you, when it sits down in here, this top notch sits high, this one sits low when you sit it in here. And don't worry about the intake cam for now. But what you do is, move the engine back to where the time and mark is this way. So quote unquote, it looks like the time is advanced. So move the engine back slightly, put the chain on like that and you know, have a pair of vice grips to clip the chain tensioner up. So the chain's just really loose and keep these bearing caps tight. You don't have to loosen up those. And then this is the way I found to do it. And then just put the chain back on take the tensioner off and look and see if it's lined up. And I managed to do that. It was really easy and it seemed to work. And then all you gotta do is just, you know, line up your intake. That's all it is. All right, so the 750 is finally put all back together in about, you know, 10 seconds of this edited video. So yeah, 
And there were a little bit of questionable moments when I was reassembling this, but I've seen engines run with questionable moments before and they don't seem to run too bad. Not saying that's gonna be the case of this. So, yeah, so I'm gonna have to try to put this back in here. All right, it's been a while. Got the engine in there. Everything's kind of bolted in place. I still gotta put the exhaust back on, so I'm gonna do that. I need to loosen up the wheels so I can put the chain back on and tighten the chain back up. Uh, put the coverage back on, do a couple little other things and put fresh oil in it and new filter. And it should be good. But you're probably wondering what oil I'm gonna put back in it. Advanced Auto Parts, 10W40 motor oil. Yeah, this is just no synthetic, no high mileage, no better fuel economy, no nothing. And this CB750, if you're wondering, the dual overhead cam models, uh, I don't know about the single overhead cam, but they do take four quarts of oil. And this is a wet sump. I did some research and the single overhead cam version is actually a dry sump, which is kind of interesting. But, you know, this is four quarts. Back when they used to come in four quarts, this is four quarts. So that's like the perfect, you know, kind of oil to put in there. And I can't change it now because I do not have a new oil filter. So I ordered one, it's coming, it should be here tomorrow. And once I get that, I'll put that on there and then we'll put new oil in it. Sounds pretty free to me. That's what that screw there is for. That's for the carburetor synchronizer so you can synchronize the carburetor. It's basically you put that on there and it's like a vacuum line. And whenever you give a throttle, there are a bunch of gauges and you know, if one of them goes down more or whatever, then you adjust uh, the synchronizer on the carburetor, but I'm not going to do all that. So a little update on this motorcycle. Uh, I tried to drive it for the first time. My stepdad was with me. Uh, it kind of helped me move this, you know, humongous thing. But um, I'm going to say this now. I didn't really know what I was doing when I first drove it. Apparently, the old Hondas are different than the newer Hondas because I'm used to driving like the 1990s, you know, Honda Foreman, Honda Recon with this neutral first, second, third, fourth, fifth, the sequential. I thought this was the same way. Apparently it's not, I didn't know. Apparently, for those of you who don't know, neutrals here, you have to click down to go into first gear. And then you click up a little bit and that's neutral. And then up a second. But, so when you're driving it, you click down to go in first. And if you wanna shift to second, you gotta shift up all the way and that goes into second gear and third, fourth, fifth. Because, you know, no motorcycles don't have reverse, reverses on them. So neutral is in between first and second. I didn't know that. Apparently that's all the how the old Hondas are. My stepdad told me that, because I didn't know. I thought it was like the 90s style, but you know, apparently it's not. So uh, yeah, I'll, you learn something every day.
All right, so back in the shop. Uh, still has a severe idling problem. Uh, you have to keep the choke on to give it gas, and my stepdad tried to take an off choke, and it still didn't really do much better. Still wanted to stall, so uh, I, I'm about giving up on the small caps. Runs and shifts great, as my stepdad says. Also, I did put these decals back on. Uh, I'm still sorting out some parts right there, and I gotta clean this other mess up. But the engine itself runs great. Uh, I don't really hear any strange noises. It's just carburetor issues, so just some carb tuning. And that EFI kit in there that has zero wiring harness. But yeah, it just needs some carb tuning and some other TLC stuff, accessories. This might be a pretty good bike. All right, so that'll be all for this video. Yes, I am still wearing the same clothes and same hat from the beginning of the video, but I'm filming both of these uh, scenes at the same time, so I'm, I don't really care. So that's it for the 1981 Honda CB750K model, I think, something like that. I know there's like an F and, you know, C and something else, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so, I'm glad this turned out good-ish. Hopefully it'll stay running good, so yeah. Hope you liked this video, if you did, click all the other buttons other YouTubers tell you to click. If you didn't like this video, click on thumbs down twice, because one, two, two is better than one. As always, that does not count for likes, by the way. And be sure you unsubscribe, and y'all should see me in the next one.